Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you doing? How you doing? This is Coach Carvel Bailey. Um, let's let technology do its thing for a minute and give people time to chime in. When you come in, when you come in, let me know where you're coming uh, from, where you're listening from. But if you and if you're catching this on the replay, if you are catching this on the replay, type your name, city, and state. Uh, I want to know how far the reach is going. I want to know how how many people and where we're able to help and give out this information. So if you're watching the replay, uh, type your city and state. If you're watching for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome in real life. In real time, uh, shoot your city and state where you're listening from. I'm going to send out a couple shares real quick. Again, we got the uh, first part of the basketball season that's basically a wrap. Holiday season. Now it is time to really get into the getting to. See if I can pull it up. Uh, let me see if I can share this for a minute. Uh, share this also. Share this also. I'm be giving. I'm gonna list some things that I've noticed, some things that I've seen, uh, some things that you can share not only with your athletes, uh, maybe even with uh, your athletes' coach or coaches. You can share it with um, your colleagues, and definitely parents is useful for you as well. So let me just share this. Real quick. All right, let's do it. Um, again, my name is Coach Carvel Bailey, and um, I'm a former college head basketball coach. And what I do now is I help parents um from all over the country that have unrecruited or under recruited student athletes i help them um, save money on college and get themselves a college uh scholarship i'm also an author of a couple books uh, we can talk about that a little bit later understanding life through the game of basketball as well as creating the perfect storm um a lot of everything what we do um stems from helping athletes from the neck up. So many athletes are just focused on the shoulders down and it really doesn't matter how many, you know, how much talent they have. If they aren't here, if they don't believe it here, none of that talent will ever, ever make sense. So a couple things, um, let's jump right into it. Um, a couple observations that I've made and you, if you have pen and paper, you can write these things down um, also because I'm going to go pretty quickly uh, through these things. And then at the end, if you have any questions, if you have any questions at the end, um, again, you can type them in the chat now. And at the end, I go through the questions um, on the replay. I will do my best to get back and try to answer uh, each uh, question best as I can. So first thing, first thing is this, um, parents. I need for my parents to be realistic. Let's start being realistic. Um, and uh, here's what I mean. Um, oftentimes parents want to uh, see their child play. Yes, yes, everyone wants to see their child play. They want to see their child compete, want to see their child participate. But parents, let's be realistic. Let's be realistic, not only on the athletic ability of your uh, child, but let's be realistic. Where does basketball rank in that totem pole of um, priorities? Um, let's be realistic. If your athlete's grades are not the, up to par, that's more important than them playing. Uh, if your athlete's attitude is not um, conducive uh, for them to be coached and be coached properly, uh, that's more important than their playing time. Uh, so let's be realistic on not only the expectations that we put on the athletes, but also the expectations that we put on the coach. So um, let's just be realistic parents about, and you know me, you know, I always got notes so I can stick to the talking points, keep the main thing, the main thing. Um, so be realistic about playing time. As a coach, I would talk to parents about anything except for playing time. Playing time is, is all based on um, need, all based on need and what value is your athlete bringing? What value 
um, does your athlete have that we need, right? So uh, most parents, um, you know, think that their plan time is based on, well, my son scored more than this uh, person or my daughter scored more than this person. But if we have four or five scores on our team, your child being the fifth score is not as important and not as valuable to our team as opposed to maybe the attitude that they bring or the academics that they bring or even whatever the intangibles, whatever their strength is. So your athletes have to be able to understand what value they bring to each team. And that will change um, every team that they play on and every year it will change. But what can change also is the value that your son or daughter brings to the team. And it's not just about scoring. So many parents just think that it's about scoring. But let's be realistic about our plan time. Let's be realistic about our athletes' attitude. Not only attitude about the sport, but their attitude about their teammates, their attitude about their coaches, the attitude just about basketball in general. Um, let's have a great attitude. Academics, again, student, athlete, it's a reason why student comes before athlete. Let's prioritize what's important. And again, let's keep the main thing the main thing. So parents, I'm asking you again, as the season has, is just starting, let's be realistic. Let's stop jumping on the referees. Let's stop jumping on the coaches. Um, let's hold ourselves. And I'm a parent of a student athlete. So let's hold ourselves to a higher standard than we tend to hold everyone else. Is our child getting to practice when they should get to practice? Are they getting to practice late? Are they, you know, properly new nutrition? Are they ready to be a student? Are they ready to be an athlete? Um, are they ready to do those things? And there may be some things that as a parent, you may not understand because you're not around, but then you come to the games and you are expecting something else to happen, but you're missing something that has went on during that process. So parents, let's just be realistic. Another thing, um, athletes, athletes, please run the floor. Um, you know, again, it's a heavy offensive minded basketball game nowadays. So many individuals are just offensive minded. Me, I'm a defensive coach. I think all those funny and, and, and great and sweet moves that, you know, your athlete practices when they're with their trainer and all that, none of that will happen if you get an individual that plays defense because now they aren't able to deal with the counter move or really just be able to deal with, remember I'm, I'm, I'm talking about here, be able to deal with the adversity of having somebody right on you. So because – more teams want to boogity boogity, as one of my former uh, colleagues and close friend, uh, Thomas Johnson, always says. He's the uh, head women's coach at Morgan Park here in Chicago. He always says that he wants his team to boogity boogity. Well, when you are running, there's a couple things. Uh, there's a couple things necessary when you're a running team. First of all, running teams have to be. Listen to me. I'm gonna lean in a little bit. Teams that like to run. They have to be great defensive rebounders. They have to be. If you want to run, and that is nothing more fun than watching a team that can run and run fast and run right, right? But they have to get the ball first. Until we get possession of the ball, none of that boogity boogity is going to happen because the other team has possession of the ball. So great uh, fast break teams. If you look at the Lakers back in the day, if you look at, you know, UNLV running Rebels, if you look at Loyola Marymount, uh, you know, they were totally different. I'm probably dating myself a little bit, but these are three great teams. Uh, Showtime, the Lakers, UNLV, and Loyola Marymount. Go back and do your research on those and be able to, like, understand what that style of basketball looked like because it's, it's starting to mirror it a little bit, but some of the fundamentals are different. But when you're getting up and down, you have to be a great defensive rebounding team. But here's the key that all those running teams had. All five players, and this is what I've not seen thus far, uh, all five players, pick a lane, choose a lane, and run your lane. I'm going to say that again. Pick a lane. Choose a lane. And stay in your lane. 
I see so many athletes, you know, especially in practice, those those teams that, that do practice secondary breaks and those things, okay, the two is on the right, the three is on the left, the four is in the middle, the five is taking the ball out, the one is pushing up the right side of the court. Well, what happens if the right side of the court gets taken away? Well, I've seen so many individuals, the, the two is fighting with the three because – they're like, oh, wait a minute, I got to get over here. You know, the three is already on the right, the two is on the left, and instead of them just running their lanes, what I'm saying is basketball is interchangeable. We have, like, we're really getting into positionless basketball, so it has to be the same way when you run your lanes. First, let's grab the defensive rebound. Let's get possession of the ball. Now let's run our lanes. All right. And as you're running your lanes, this is what I was taught. This is how I've always taught it. You want to get wide because you want to stretch the defense out so that whoever is in the middle of the court leading the break, orchestrating the break, again, go look at the showtime. Go, go look at Magic Johnson. Go look at Greg Anthony with UNLV. Go look at even like Bo, Bo Kimball um, when he was at Loyola Marymount. That point guard is getting in the middle of the lane. Now that point guard is in the middle of the lane. Those wings are running wide. So now that point guard has a clear vision of who and where he wants to get the ball. Once you get to the three-point line athletes, once you get to the three-point line, so you want to run three-point line extended, but once you hit the three-point line, now you want to start converging into the rim. So many athletes are shortening the court because they're running tight. They're running tight. Um, you hear so many coaches when they do the three-man weave, and they say, get wide. Well, parents, what I mean by realistic, let's get better educated also. The reason why most coaches tell athletes to stay wide on a three-man weave is so that they can emulate a fast break. Does that make sense? So you want to stay wide. When you get to the three-point line, now start angling in. Start angling in like on a 45 degree angle so that you can get ready for that pass. But if you're not running your lanes, how are you going to get the basketball? The bigs, they should be running nail to nail, right down the middle. Nail to nail, right down the middle because you have a greater opportunity to get the ball in the middle and be able to finish. And then once the point guard picks a side, if he's going to the right or to the left with it, now that four or five, who's the first person up the court? Because the first one up the court has to like boogity boogity that four or five. Now, once the ball is shifted to one side of the court, now that big, now that post player can go to that side block. Now we can get everything moving. But I don't see athletes running their lanes. I see so many athletes coming to the ball. Give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. Now that may be how the coach wants it to be, like to where they want the point guard handling the ball. But again, as we're moving and evolving into positionless basketball, you definitely you definitely want to make sure that you're able to not only be able to handle the basketball, Again, parents, we're talking about being realistic. Make sure that your athlete can handle the basketball, one. Make sure that your athlete can pass the basketball, two. Make sure that your athlete is able to finish, finish. So as they're running, they may get the ball. It might be a layup that, you know, post guy might have a shot. If they don't get a layup, now athletes, you have to be a little bit more aware. Are those two wings going to cross? Are you going to come in and if you don't get that bounce pass or that lead pass for, you know, the layup or the finish, are you now going to replace yourself and come back out to, to the wing? You know, like if any of this language is foreign to you, um, I really, really – um, recommend that you start doing a little bit more research just on basketball language, basketball terminology. A uh, part of why most athletes are lost because they really can't comprehend what that particular coach is saying. And if that coach is like stuck on their way um, and they're not going to change the language or dumb it down so that the athletes can understand, they'd be totally lost. So parents and athletes get more aware, get more um, 
educated on just the language and the lingo, you know, of what I'm talking about. And I'm not really not using any big words, but are you going to replace yourself uh, now for that shot? Um, you know, there are so many other ways that some coaches, you know, may do it. Uh, I know Coach Calipari, you know, when I really, really studied him for about three or four years, um, he he actually has, and actually Coach Calipari got part of it from Coach Rick, Rick Pitino. But Coach Rick Pitino, um, and <laughs> um, we know that he comes from a great coaching tree, but Coach Patino will actually have one of his guys fan out to the three-point line because he got up lots and lots of threes before it was really, really easy, and 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 uh, a lot of teams started shooting threes. So he would send one of his uh, lane runners, have them stop at the three. The other one is going to the basket, so now they're really stretching the defense. Um, so run your lanes, pick a lane, stay in your lane. The next thing, athletes, let's stop being so selfish. Let's stop being so, and here's what I mean by being selfish. You're pounding the basketball. Stop pounding the basketball because for each dribble that you take, you're getting your team tired. I'm going to say that again. For each extra dribble you take, you're getting your team tired. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing a team run a fast break without the ball ever hitting the ground. It's not like, like, a masterpiece is nothing more beautiful than seeing a fast break and that ball never hit the ground. Boom, 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 boom. Stop pounding the ball. That's that's selfish. It's indirectly selfish because you want to see how long can you bounce this basketball. A coach told me a long time ago, and I love this quote. All right, and you probably want to write this down and you know tweet it, share it, whatever you want to do. The worst thing that happened to the basketball. The worst thing that happened to the basketball. Anybody know? I'll wait. Let's, let's see if anybody put, uh, put it in the comments. The worst thing that happened to the basketball is what? I'm going to see if anybody get it. If anybody can get it before they say it, I'm going to send you a free book. The worst thing that they did to basketball is what? To the basketball is what? Okay, I ain't going to keep you waiting. The worst thing that they ever did to a basketball was put air in it. <laughs> Listen, the worst thing that they did to a basketball was put air in it. If you understand the history of basketball, right, with the peach basket and all that, they had to pass the ball. The worst thing they ever did to a basketball was put air in it because now it comes right back up to you. And, like, you're almost hypnotizing yourself because you just look at the worst thing they ever did to a basketball, put air in it. Athletes, move the ball, pass the ball, stop being so selfish. If you pass the ball, I assure you, the ball will come back and find you. All right, so we got run your lanes, uh, pick a lane, find a lane. Don't be selfish. Um, run the floor, right? Now, we talked about running the lanes, but let's run the floor because so many teams – are their team morale is going down because they aren't running the floor. And I'm talking about on defense. So many teams are getting beat back on defense to where before they know it, they're down 8, 10, 12 points. Teams that make runs on you, generally those runs are made in transition or fast breaks. Teams don't generally make complete basketball runs in a half-court set. Teams really don't make runs strictly in a half court set. Those runs build up momentum due to teams not getting back and running the court, running the floor on defense. So now they're able to get an easy shot. Now they're able to get a quick transition bucket. Now that confidence and that momentum is building up. Now they're able to, you know, bang down a three. Now, you know, they get it going, the crowd get rolling, the other coach like, time out. And then when that other coach do that, now the momentum is that much greater. Does that make sense? So if teams really just run the floor on defense, they solve half their problems. <clears throat> because most teams, because since they want to run, if you can get back on defense and stop a team's ability to get easy buckets, well, now that team has to think. You see how everything goes back to this? Now that team has to think. 
Now they have to call that play. They have to run that play. They have to try to figure it out, but they have to try to figure it out on the fly as opposed to now they just playing off instinct and just off reaction because that momentum is building up and now they just totally charged up. So run the court, run the floor on defense. Also on defense, can we talk, please, athletes? Can we talk, coaches? Can we get our athletes to talk, please? Coach Mike Krzyzewski said, the first thing that goes when athletes get tired is their mind. Coach K. Coach K says, the first thing that goes in an athlete's mind, or first thing that goes when an athlete is tired is their mind. And so now what Coach K does, Coach K talks about the, the fingers, right? How all five fingers have a job. And, and Coach K's, and I'm not sure uh, off the top of my head, but, I, but like one may be like discipline, one may be like teamwork, responsibility, right? It's like five values. And if you watch Duke, and he's been doing this for a long, 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 long time, um, and in my study of Coach K, like when I when I first started on a college level about 11, 12 years ago, uh, and I was actually like really, really studying Coach K real hard. Um, Coach K, if you watch Duke, when the game gets tight, you'll see Duke team doing this, right? And when Duke team does this, it's almost like a football team in the fourth quarter when, when everybody holding up their fours. Right. Well, Coach K teams does this because he says that all of those fingers make a fist. And in order for his team to be in perfect alignment, especially when they're tired, all these have to work together to form a fist. So because Coach K knows that the first thing that goes when the athletes get tired is their mind, he reminds his players to find something, right, that's part of their culture that lets everyone remember why they're doing what they're doing. And nobody knows it unless you read the book, unless you listen to an interview, unless you ask Coach K a question, or unless you listen to this Facebook Live and this video. I'm telling you not. Watch them when they hold that fist up. That's when they really, 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 really focus in because they understand everybody has to do their job. Everybody has to do whatever they're supposed Everybody has to be responsible. All right, everybody has to bring energy. Whatever those five things are, when they go here, do own it. All right, so talk on defense, right? You have to talk on defense. Now, personally, I can't stand that. Red, 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 red. Oh, I hate that. I hate that, right? It's just a pet peeve of mine. But it's nothing like the the bench talking, which brings me to another point. The players on the court have to talk, but the bench, please, please, athletes, parents, if you're and, – and see, this is what I mean about let's be realistic. Just because your, your son or daughter is not in the game does not mean that they shouldn't be like the biggest cheerleader on the bench. Come on, Adam. I mean, this is like – honestly – I've seen so many dead benches from games that I saw online, and this is just not high school. I mean, you know, I have people all the time, you know, sending me videos, check out, you know, this person, check out my son, my daughter, my niece, my nephew, my grandbaby, you know, and I don't watch all of them. I do my best to, you know, try to, you know, look, um, you know, because I want to help, but I see so many dead benches, right? And, it's hard as an athlete. I'm speaking for as, as an athlete, as a competitor. As a competitor, you need things to be able to push you and to be able to, you know, not only hold you accountable, but be able to push you. The bench has to do that. Most benches are dead. They're not talking. You know, they're not, you know, when I was in, you know, came up in school, we would, it was that class, right? Who? Squad. Who? Squat. Like, like we was doing something. Defense. Defense. And I mean to the point to where if you're in the game or if you're out the game, you got to have that energy, baby. You got to talk because most offensive players will get mentally distracted if you're talking on defense. Screen. Pick right. Pick left. Ball. Rebound. Box out. Shot. Relatively easy. All right. So, 
another defensive thing. Can we play defense with our hands up? Can we stop playing defense with our hands down? You can't be in the man to man just like this. Right? You can't be in the zone with your hands on your shorts. When you're in a defensive, when you're on defense, your hands should be out and up, out and up. Shorten the court. Let's shorten the court. If everybody put their hands out like this, you know how short the half court set is? You know how much the other team has to think to be able to fully execute? But if your hands are down, ooh, passing lanes are wide open. We got everything going. We got lives going. We got everything happening because your hands are down. Put your hands up. Now, when you own the ball, now, when you're on the ball, one hand should be in the passing lane and one hand should be on the ball. One hand should be in the passing lane, right? It's hard for me on the camera. And one hand should be on the ball. I'm actually making another video about that also. But let's put our hands up on defense. Let's talk on defense. Let's make it a little bit difficult. Now, let's get to the good part. The good teams that I saw, the good teams that I saw, they may have had some of those issues, but here's what the good teams did. And parents, please get your athletes to understand this, to be able to work on this. Coaches, work on this with your teams, please. Um, Athletes, be coachable. Be coachable and listen to what your coach is talking about because they probably know a little bit more about the game than you do. All right? So let's be receptive to it. All right? But what the good teams have done that I've seen, good teams, oh, my goodness, good teams move that basketball. I've seen some, and, you know, people talk about the San Antonio Spurs. They're a great ball movement team. I've seen some teams this year move that basketball that's like an uh, orchestra. I mean, it looks so amazing. And this is even a half-court set. So, and and, and te- good teams that do that, understand they're good teams because, remember, I, I'm not calling you a bad team, but I'm saying what I've seen athletes need to work on. Now I'm talking about what good teams do, right? Good teams aren't selfish, right? Not only are they not pounding the ball, but they're moving that thing next pass, next pass, next pass. Next pass, right? You have to be a threat. So you have to be willing and ready to shoot the ball. Don't overpass that thing. But be thinking next pass. Like one more. You know, I used to go over that with my, t- like one more. Because when the defense is not, listen, this is a bonus. Teams don't get beat on the help. Teams get beat on the rotation. Does that make sense? Teams don't get beat on the hell because now the ball then came from the weak side of the court over to me, right? Now somebody is helping. That initial pass, we're not getting beat on the hell. That dude is helped. We get beat on the recover because if the pass is coming to me, this person now has to help me. Oh, I wish I could go to my whiteboard, but I'm not about to do that on my computer right now. But when the ball comes to me, somebody is helping my defender. But you get beat on the rotation. Now, who's going to rotate and rotate to help the defender that just helps on my man? Or my woman. So now when the ball comes to me, right, person one passes to me, person two. Now person three is helping person two, man. But when I pass to person two, person or the person uh, four, person two or person three is not ready to recover. So most times on the defensive end, we get beat on the recover, not the help or the rotate. We get beat on the rotation, not the help. That's why it's imperative to be able to talk so that everybody knows what's going on and people can properly help and rotate. But good teams move that basketball. Good teams move that basketball and they make it hard because they understand that teams get beat on a rotation, not on the help. So they're constantly moving that thing, all right? That's a golden nugget for somebody. That is a golden nugget. And when you apply that, um, you're going to see results right away. Um, The next thing, 
good teams are having fun out here. Good teams are having fun. And any basketball game game that you play, any basketball game that I've coached, no matter how high or how low, I found some point throughout the game to be able to smile and or to be able to laugh. If it's at a bad call, if it's at a good play, if it's at an athlete, a parent, a referee, whatever, you have to find something to laugh about. Have fun doing it because at the end of the day, this is all a game. At the end of the day, this is all a game. And it can take us around the world. It can change our lives. But at the end of the day, this is all a game. It's all a game. But as the side say, you bless the ball. You are blessed each and every day to play this game. All right. So have fun, have fun. And the good teams, they're having fun. I mean, man, they're, you know, shaking hands, you know, they, they laughing and fist bumping and doing all that on the court. They're having fun. Meanwhile, that team is selfish. That team is not getting back on defense. That team is not talking, right? Those are all characteristics and all traits of individuals not having fun. Is this starting to make sense? A little bit what I'm seeing. I'm I'm hoping that this is helping somebody out. All right. Make sure that you're sharing this thing because I know I'm dropping some nuggets right now. Um, so share this because um again, our mission is to be able to help educate um and empower over one million people with this basketball knowledge, um, as well as help um parents be able to save over a million dollars in college tuition. Uh, by that, by August of 2021. Like, that's our mission. That's our goal. Um, the last thing that good teams do, and then I'm out of here, the last thing that good teams do, good teams execute. I was ref another day, and I stopped. It was a tie game. Coach called timeout with three seconds left. This team was down the whole game. They made a run. How did they make runs? Because they got easy buckets. That team wasn't running back on defense. So now the last play of the game, called timeout with about three seconds. He put a, a, a play in put a play in, and I mean, they ran it, executed it to perfection, and they made the shot, and they won. And, you know, I'm a straight shooter. After the game, I went and told the other team that they played well. They just have to focus all the way through, right? And then I went and told that other team, way to execute, right? That's what championships are made of. That's what championships come from, those little things, being able to execute. So dig this. Those good teams execute. They finish plays. They finish plays. They just don't call plays. They just don't run plays. They finish plays and they execute. That's the difference. And the good teams and the teams that need to improve, um, the good athletes, the athletes that need to improve. Um, so again, this is just my observations um, over the first part of the season. I hope that this can help anyone that's, that's, that's watching this um, and most of this comes from, really, most of it comes from most of our athletes just aren't clear on where they're going. Most of our athletes aren't clear on, on, on where they're going because they don't really know how to properly plan and then uh, or set goals one and then develop a plan on how to reach those goals. So they're just kind of going through the process of the game of basketball, just kind of willy nilly or, or just basically kind of winking it, right? The athletes and the teams that have goals set, they understand that it's bigger than them. And even those athletes that have those personal goals, they understand that their personal goals can be achieved with the help of their team. So everybody is on the same page. And what most athletes aren't doing, parents, what most athletes aren't doing, they aren't understanding. Um, some coaches, well, most coaches aren't doing this. Again, there are more bad teams than good teams, right? That's why I have many more things that I've seen that needs improvement as opposed to things that, that has been working. Um, and good teams want to continue to improve every day. That's another thing. They are students of the game and they want to improve every day. But those good coaches are teaching they're athletes, the big picture. They're getting them to understand the big picture. Uh, now, just because the team isn't doesn't have a good record doesn't mean that the coach isn't good, and it doesn't mean that the coach doesn't know what they're talking about. Different scenarios um, for different situations. But if athletes learn how to really, really set goals and really, really focus on what it is that they want to hit and that target that they want to eclipse, not only as an individual and as a team, they will be much, much better. They'll be much, much better. And I've been talking about this um, for 
a little while now for a few weeks and I've had some other things that um, that have come up and um, I wasn't able to do it, but I am going to do it. It's actually going to be this Monday. This Monday, um, I am hosting a free webinar. This Monday, I'm hosting a free webinar and it's going to really, really break down uh, for you as well as your athlete, for you as well as your athlete, um, how to really, really set those goals to be able to help get them to where they want to be and where they need to be. Before I um, move any further, I just want to uh, give this plug of myself, Understanding Life Through the Game of Basketball. This is the first book, Understanding Life Through the Game of Basketball. Uh, there's certain principles, certain things in life that will help you move along a little bit better. Uh, this book explains them, and we just use basketball as the working tool to be able to help you understand the principles um, and the things that I was taught how to be a better man, how to be a better individual, were all taught to me using basketball principles. And in this book, you will get the basketball principles. I don't have the other, my other book, The Perfect Storm, in my office with me right now, but you can actually get both books as well as, uh, I believe it's like 16 episodes over about 25 hours, 25 hours of interviews with me, um, and college coaches, as well as college uh, and professional athletes. Um, you get over 20, 25 hours. You get both books. Um, I will drop the link in there. It's a great stock and stuffer. The books will probably be to you before Christmas, but guess what will be to you before Christmas? The digital download of my show, Life and Basketball. Um, and again, it's about 15, 16 episodes. Um, yourself and your athlete can be able to sit down and be able to watch and just be able to learn, get a little bit more education, a little bit more background. Um, I've had individuals, every time that we did a show, after the show, they let me know, you know, this helped me so much. This helped my athletes so much. You know, it brought back memories, give us things that we can go back to the drawing board and really, really, like, get to working on. So uh, if you want to take advantage of that, I will drop the link in there as well. But if you want access to uh, our free webinar, now I have to um, explain to you, this webinar is not um, for those individuals that just like want to be nosy. Um, some individuals that, you know, don't really want to accept new information. Uh, those individuals that aren't coachable, um, definitely if your athlete is irresponsible or not coachable, um, this isn't for you. This webinar is for those individuals that want to learn, that want to learn. This is for parents. Parents, if your athlete really, really wants to learn, if your athlete really, really wants to get better, not only on the basketball court, but off the basketball court as well. Part of their issue of them breaking out and breaking into that person and that elite individual that you know that they can be as a parent, part of that issue is that they're improperly setting goals. They're improperly setting goals. So when you improperly set goals, those goals are so low to where you hit them every time and it doesn't do you any good. So um, I am, let me put this in the chat now. Uh, all right, so you can go there. for the free webinar. Go there for the free webinar and you can go here to be able to get access to the book and Life and Basketball Bundle. All right, so either way, I just dropped them both in the chat. Um, hey, I appreciate you guys taking the time uh, to be able to, to listen um, and just get this information, this knowledge from me. Um, again, if you have any questions, anything, drop them in the chat. If you feel, if you feel that this information was helpful to you as a parent, if you feel that this information was helpful to you as a coach or as an educator, 
But if, and if you feel that this information um, was good for you as an athlete, I want you to just drop um, any takeaways that you got from anything uh, on this short. It actually turned out to be a class. I was really like just going live, but it actually turned out to be a, a class so much so that I'm probably, um, if this is this will probably be up for another 12 hours and I'm gonna probably pull it down and put it uh, in our members area for our clients because I think it's, it's, it's some great information um, that will be able to help them also. But I wanted to give it to you first as a season of giving. Um, that's why I'm giving away also, I believe it's 25 slots for the webinar. So you can go in and register for the webinar. Um, Yep, so I think it's only like 25 slots, so you can go there and get registered for the webinar. Um, you can pick up your bundle, Understanding Life Through the Game of Basketball. All right, easy read, easy peasy, easy, easy read, all right? Um, the Perfect Storm, the, not the, the Perfect Storm. What the Perfect Storm book is, the Perfect Storm is, you know, you hear so many athletes talk about they were in the zone, right? They were, they were in the zone. They can't really describe or explain what happened. Well, creating the perfect storm, as I call it, is when athletes can mentally or just individuals can mentally put themselves in a space and where they're, they're really honing in their development, right? Their experience, um, and like just 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 be able to just hone it all in and be able to um, activate something inside of them that gets them laser focus. That gets them laser focus. All right, the preparation, the development, as well as the experience. Um, when they can put those together. So this book really gives you tools, gives you strategies of things that athletes, and now this book is for any athlete. This book is for any athlete also. You just take out the word basketball, you put softball, baseball, football, uh, tennis, ball, golf, ball, whatever it is, right? Swimming, they don't have a ball, but you you just insert that. Even just, just understanding life, um, you know, like through work, it's all the same. All right, principle, uh, you know, core principles that will help you be better and perform better in life. Understanding life through the game of basketball, that is this book. You can also get The Perfect Storm, and they come in a bundle. All right, they come in a bundle together with over 20, 25 hours of uh, my show, uh, Life and Basketball. All right, and here is where individuals get an opportunity uh, opportunity to not only share their story about what basketball has done for them, but also uh, is very educational as well as very entertaining. So you can go there or you can register for the boot camp. Um, until next time, I don't talk to you guys before the holidays, which I'm pretty sure I will. Uh, you guys have a merry, merry Christmas on behalf of uh, myself, Carvel Bailey, my family, the Bailey family, um, Tiffany, Ashley, Addison, and Tristan, uh, as well as Bless the Ball and all of our staff and supporters. We want to meekly, we want to meekly wish you Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, um, and go get registered for the webinar. I right? go get registered for, for the webinar. It's going to be Monday at eight o'clock. Webinar going to be Monday at eight o'clock. It's going to be bananas. All right, go register. And we will see you guys on the other side. Don't forget to share this to somebody that you know that can use this. All right. Talk to you guys later. Remember, as always, strive for the top. Why? Because it's crowded as hell at the bottom. Y'all be good. Peace.